Hey folks, and welcome to the Small Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Raf from EC, and today we have a guest on the show. He has over a decade experience in recruitment across Australia, Singapore, the UK, and Canada. Runs events around AI and machine learning, as well as software and mobile development. And he is currently the CEO and principal consultant at North Technology People. He is Adam Delgado. Adam. Welcome to the Small Tech Podcast. Awesome, man. Great to be here. Thanks for that intro. I was expecting like it was a very Bruce Buffer-esque. I was, uh, I was feeling the energy, man. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice to have you on the show, man. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. No complaints. Looking forward to a bit of a sunny weather. It's still pretty chilly here in, in Toronto. So uh, yeah, looking forward to some spring and sun and pints on patios. Amazing. Yeah, pints on patios sounds great. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about how you got into recruiting, how you got into tech. Yeah, how you got here. What's the story? Yeah, so a lot of my friends went to university after straight out of high school, and I did not. So I, I kind of finished okay. high school and then thought, hey, I'm just going to like work for a while. And I was doing a lot of telesales stuff, just cold calling. And then I went and met with a recruiter for a job. And he's like, Hey, have you ever thought about a career in recruitment? I said, no. He's like, you should. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And that was kind of the nudge in that direction. I redid my CV a little and started applying for recruiter jobs. And then I was really fortunate to join a boutique's recruitment agency in Tor- uh, sorry, in Sydney back in the early yeah. 2000s uh, called 44 Recruitment. Tara was the managing director and founder at the time. She was like old school English recruiter, Graythorn, Michael Page, Randstad. She'd been at all those big shops and she taught yeah. me everything, man. Tips tell about 360 recruitment. So that, that was kind of how I got into it. Amazing. I'm curious, like when you first got that question, what did recruitment even mean to you? I feel like from my perspective, I don't even know what that entails. Is it mostly like reaching out to people? Or do you have to have a bit of technical understanding of what the people do? Like what, how does it work? So like the general recruitment is like, there's two sides to it. You've got your business development, which is like sales kind of thing. And then you've got your actual recruiting. And then there's yeah. a model called 360 recruitment where it's basically end to end. I, I cut my teeth on 360 recruitment and basically yeah. we're a services business. So We work a lot in the tech sector across North America. So our clients are startups, pre-seed, VC funded, all the way up to enterprise companies. And they will give us a requirement. We we picked up a role today, very fortunate, with a shout out to, to Maple Finance, a big DeFi player. And basically they said that, hey, we need a VP of capital markets. So we've got the spec now. We've signed terms with them. So now we're helping them go and recruit uh, for this type of role. Fortunately, we've done this type of uh, recruitment before, so we've already got a network of candidates. And that's really where a recruiter really earns their medal is having a network of people that our clients might not be able to tap into. Yeah, that makes sense. And when you first got into this, was it also tech? Yeah, yeah. So I cut my teeth on systems and network engineers back when VMware was a thing and all the storage and stuff. So that was kind of where I first started. And then hopped around a little bit, started doing some more software dev, digital UX, UI. And then when I moved to Canada and the US, that was really when I started doing very, very heap deep into software development. And then when I started all technology people, I'm like, hey, I want to work with the cool stuff. I don't want to be like, oh, we're just like a recruiting PHP. So I was like, hey, AI, ML data, software, mobile product. That's our jam. That's our specialty. And we've kind of applied those niches across a variety of different verticals. So we're doing stuff in Web3, blockchain. We're doing some cool stuff in robotics. Our clients are in quantum computing. Shout out to Agnostic as well. They do some great work in quantum in Toronto. So yeah, that, that's kind of the, the long and short of, of, uh, of our network and, and our clients. That's awesome. I, out of curiosity, are there any sectors that you find are particularly interesting or difficult to recruit for? I feel like the AI stuff that's been booming, you hear about some of the the salaries that the the folks working at places like OpenAI are making. That's got to be a very selective uh, process and small small pool of people. How how does it differ across sectors? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I mean, tech, why I loved it and why I've always recruited in tech 
there's always something new coming out. There's always new technology, new framework. So being in that sector, there's always the new shiny thing. And as I said, we found it in Jan 2020, just before the pandemic kicked off, <laughs> focusing on AI and machine learning. But whilst it was a market, it wasn't the sexy gen AI chat post chat TPT world that we live in. So it, yeah. it is definitely supply and demand, and that really ties into salary. So when the demand is up, Gen AI, if you look at any hardware skills in like ASIC, FPGA, CPUs, GPUs, the compiler technology, that stuff, man, red hot at the minute. It's really, really <laughs> hard to find people. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, but I mean, what we've seen on the other end of the market is obviously all the layoffs that happened in the last kind of 12-ish, 18 months in the US tech market. That's kind of we had that follow-on effect here in Canada. When there are massive layoffs, the shoe's on the other foot. Now the demand is decreased and there's a huge supply of candidates. So that formula generally puts downward pressure on salaries. When there's increased demand, candidate shortage, that's when the salaries are going up. And that's exactly what we're seeing at the minute in, in those kind of AI hardware verticals. Yeah, that makes sense. Also, since you brought up that effect from the US coming into Canada, You've done this in a few different parts of the world. Do you see big differences in the process in different countries or maybe even just like from legal perspectives? Like, how does it all work? It's really interesting, man. If you take a look back at any, if you, I'm just going to pick random country, say Australia, and we're really close yeah. to like Indonesia. And then we've got China and Japan and the Middle East and the UK and Europe and North America. If you go and walk around the streets, what is typical behavior and what is acceptable in one region? You take that to another region and you might get you might find yourself in a little strife. So what I found <laughs> was really interesting is that every country you live in has these different yeah. cultural norms. And yeah. there are there are pros and cons I find to every region that I've lived in. I find that if we take the UK and Australia and the APAC region, very direct. Mm -hmm. It is quite transactional where people are, you know, I don't necessarily need to have a brand or a reputation or a connection with this person. They're like, hey, you're a recruiter. Hey, here's some good candidates. Sure, I'll, I'll take a look. Let's try it out. Whereas here yeah. in the US and Canada, that type of business approach, is, it still might happen, but it's a very, it's a much smaller amount of success. So it's very relationship driven. But then if you go to somewhere in Asia, again, it's going to be different. So it was just, I find, getting used to those different uh, cultural norms. And I mean, we've been in Canada now since 2017. So certainly I find that we've adapted to what is norm, but I still have a, a particular style about how I do my work <laughs> and, and how I meet people yeah. and such. Uh, some people, um, I don't want to say love or hate, but it, it kind of comes down to that. So some <laughs> people like don't respond well to it at all. Like, oh, it's too strong. I, I did a disc assessment. Strong D personality, just like down the line, let's talk the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. Whereas I find yep. sometimes people need a bit of fluffy couple of conversations. <laughs> so I'm like, eh, whatever. It yep. work with me or don't. I, it doesn't make that much of a difference on mine. I'm here to help. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Piggybacking on that question, I'm curious, do you all work, like the way you all work, is it just... So you recruit four firms in North America, and is the talent pool you're looking at always going to be folks in North America? Or do you also look to the rest of the world either for remote roles or do these companies sometimes want to look worldwide to perhaps bring someone into to their North American offices? So during the pandemic, everyone was like remote first. Yeah. Yeah. So we recruited across, I found that when we picked up roles, it was quite broad across the globe, especially in Web3. You feel like Web3, Blockchain, DeFi, those clients were just like anybody, anywhere. Just find me the best people. So we just yeah. only see, saw that. Traditionally, when we first started, we only did Canada. And then it was after about six-ish, 12 months that we're like, hey, there is so much more business to be had in North America or in the States. So we won a few accounts in the US, but I'd say... Primarily, our main network and our main focus is in Canada, but through that, obviously, it's hard to ignore the U.S. there. Yeah, and one point is where you're talking about bringing people in and around. There are recruitment businesses that have, they specialize in bringing international talent for Canadian companies. But what I mm -hmm. think is interesting to 
note on companies that offer that type of model. We're missing out on the Canadian talent. So there's a lot of people in Canada who are like, hey, can I please work? And then there are companies yeah. that are like, hey, we can hire you this dude from Mexico or this person from Pakistan or whatever, and they'll bring them over on a visa. And it's been to the detriment of local Canadian talent. So I think, yeah, just at the end of the day, there's a lot of people who can do a lot of work and there's a lot of companies hiring. It's, it, we're just matchmakers at the end of the day. And we spend a lot of time building our network and our brand and these. So as, when, and if the role comes up, hey, Presto, we've already you know got a good network of people there. Yeah, that makes sense. Out of curiosity, as a North American firm, do you also, would you do recruiting? Would you work with a, a company outside of North America who wants to recruit North American talent? Small business, man. We're not too picky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, yeah. Anyone. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really. If, if, <laughs> yeah, if, if somebody, that's fair. you know, in Europe said, hey, we want to build a team in Toronto, happy to help them. If a... Yeah company or let's say a US company, for example, wants to hire in Toronto, hey, we can do that. Another point I'll just highlight as well about the whole pandemic thing. When we yeah. kicked off the pandemic in Canada, it, it blew up the market, man, because all these US tech companies were hiring and they were poaching mm -hmm. a lot of really good Canadian talent. So what that meant is it's driven the, it's increased the demand for Canadian engineers and therefore increased the salaries, which is why during that peak pandemic, we saw salaries going crazy. And now a lot of yeah. people are talking about this whole tech downturn. It's kind of, we're, we're balancing ourselves out a little bit. A lot okay. of these tech companies had these huge valuations. So now it's kind of like, hey, we're settling back to something that's a little more stable. Than Mind you, if you're an AI yeah. company, maybe a different story, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So North Technology People, is that your first first foray into building a business yourself? Yes, it is. Yeah. How's that going? Champagne and razor blades. There's an old old saying in, in <laughs> recruitment, champagne and razor blades. You're either popping corks because you made placements and everybody's happy and you're making money, or it's yeah. razor blades where you're like, oh my God, <laughs> this is very hard. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm having some dark thoughts. So look, man, honest, yeah. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I was really fortunate yeah. where I had a little bit of cash lying around where I'm like, hey, you know what? I could probably see myself through for the next three, six months without a job want to start yeah. making some money. So it was pretty touch and go for the first six months because like I said, we incorporated, I think it was like 14th or the 24th of Jan, 2020. And then literally two and weeks later, we're yeah, rough time. really bad, really. But, <laughs> you know, we, as I said, we had some cash to tide me over for a little bit. It was pretty scary thinking, hey, what what's happening? And I think everybody was in the same boat. Yeah. yeah, first business, learned a ton, learned from failing. I guess, I don't know if people are too proud to say that, but hey, guess what? You learn so much more from a mistake than you do from a success because you're like, oh, it worked. But if you fail, you're yeah. like, ah, sometimes you have to learn that lesson the hard way. So it's been awesome. I've hired and, and trained and coached and managed people from zero recruitment experience to be highly proficient. A lot of these people have now gone on for other roles and for turnover and sometimes didn't work out with particular people, but I'm really happy with what with what I've built. And I think we've done some great work for some great companies. So uh, yeah, certainly happy with, with how things are, but certainly not the only thing I'm working on at the minute. Got a little stealth tech startup I'm working on at the minute um, <laughs> with, uh, with a, a tech small tech product in London. It is a small tech product. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Is there anything you can tell us about that? Or is that still keeping that quiet for now? No, yeah. So I will i don't want to, you know, obviously this is going to go out to a live audience and we're still definitely in that stealth mode, but hopefully we can yeah. reveal in the next couple of weeks. But basically Amazing. it's in the recruitment sector and yeah. having done a ton of research about what else is out there, a lot of people are trying to uh, automate the job of a recruiter. Yeah. Which is kind of like this AI for everything. Oh, it's going to be AI for this, but it's mm -hmm. going to be AI for this. And uh, where, what I come back to is like, is AI necessarily, is it, is it the right hammer? Is it the right tool for this problem? And I think everybody's yeah. just hitting things with AI. There's so, so we're trying to, we're, yeah, totally. So we're definitely utilizing AI. It's in the recruitment space and sector, but I yeah. can comfortably say I have not, through dozens of hours of research, I have not found any global competitors that are doing what we do. So I'm pretty, uh, sh pretty sure, man, once we launch, yeah, 
I mean, I'm, I'm totally like tooting my own horn here, but where I really do think we're going to disrupt. I mean, I know again that, yeah, hey, man, you're talking a big <laughs> game. You know, we're, we're, once, once we launch what we've built and what I have in my mind, I don't think yeah. recruitment will be done the same way again. And we're really trying to solve problems. You know, everybody's like, oh, let's automate recruitment. And I'm like, sure, you guys do that. We're going to go yeah. over here and build this thing. And then hopefully we're going to eat your lunch. Well, maybe in a few months, we should have you back on and you can talk about your product development journey. Mate, I would absolutely love it. I've been super inspired to to build something like this. And it's now, it's not, I want to actually transition out of North Technology people and, and work on this startup full time this year. That's obviously going to be super difficult, but it's yeah. what, I, what I want to do. And we're going to apply for YC in a couple of weeks. So fingers exciting. crossed. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. fingers knows. crossed. That's super exciting. Man, building products is just, it's also just so much fun. Like, I love it. Have you found that so far, the product development stuff? Exciting, difficult? Was it what you were expecting? Was it not? Like, how's that going for you? I'm a, I'm a sales guy. That That's what I've done yeah. for the last 15 years or so. I don't want to be yeah. a sales guy anymore. I, I want to, and where I think my skills, my recruitment background will really complement a tech company is on that product. So, Having yeah. listened to a bunch of podcasts and events and he heard a lot of smart people talk, yourself, Ralph, last week on our show, I appreciate that one. You know, there is a there is certainly a recipe that people suggest in, in building tech products. Whether or not you follow that recipe or have or follow the advice, completely <laughs> different story. But yeah, yeah I think it, people don't know what they want. And your job as a founder and a product person is to iterate and try and experiment. Hey, what about this? What about that? So that fail fast kind of design mentality is certainly something that I've taken on board. And I mean, for mine, if I can learn from somebody who's smarter than me and learn a lesson the easy way when someone's like, hey, Adam, don't do that. <laughs> yep. Got your Raf. Next. So <laughs> nice. yeah, excited for that journey for sure. Awesome. Cool. Anything else you want to tell me about North Technology people or the events? Thank you so much for having me last week. That was amazing. I think I saw you also do like an AI machine learning one. So yeah. Yeah, man. So, you know, recruitment business, we make placements. That's where we generate revenue. But since we started the business, I've also always believed in the term of kind of business karma, you know, like if we're creating this this free event community and resource for people across Canada, Canada and North Korea and, and we're yeah. contributing to the ecosystem. Good things come off the back of that. And we have just met so many fantastic people, clients and candidates alike through our events. So yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. But yeah, don't, don't want to plug the business too much. If you're hiring or you're looking for work, always happy to have conversations. I think recruitment's probably... I don't want to call myself an expert because I don't like to. So I just, I know a lot about recruitment and no, I'll call yeah, you an have, expert. Have, okay, if sure. you don't want to say you it, get, I'll say it. <laughs> yeah, you get called these types of things that when people are like, "Oh, I'm an entrepreneur," I'm like, I think you get called that. You know, that's it's like a nickname. You know what I mean? Like nobody is like, yeah. "Oh, yeah, I'm like Jimmy Jones." It's like, does anybody call you that, or is that what you want people to call you? You, you get awarded <laughs> a nickname, you get awarded those types of titles. So, yeah, I think we do cool things. We, our results speak for themselves, and yeah, happy to chat and help anybody who's looking for work or struggling. I know it, it's pretty tough out there at the minute. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We're going to wrap this up with the small tech question. So uh, I hear you've brought a, a small tech product to talk about something that you use that has meaningfully affected your life in some way or that you find neat or fun or yeah, what you got for us? Yeah. So there is this app called PDF Filler. Now we, PDF when we filler. yeah, when we get CVs in from candidates, they have all their details on there. And there are some things that we want to scrub off, i.e. personal contact details when we send them to the client because we don't want them to call the candidate directly and then we miss out on that and the conversations and the follow-up, blah, blah, blah. So we say, hey, if you want to talk to Jim or Jane or Raf, let us know and we'll coordinate that. PDF Filler has just been like super useful where you just upload any <laughs> document, specifically PDFs, which you can't edit. And then I'll yeah. go in and I'll draw a square and I'll say remove and then I'll add logo. It, I don't know how many users they have, but it's just been... I mean, we, we used it for the last four years and it's just like a no brainer. It's like, yep, cool. We need this. So there's that, which I found was super handy and useful for us. Also, if you're like just an average Joe or Jane, Carrot is a mobile app that I also lurk and use. I've used to buy some things. 
So basically, <laughs> it's like eBay, but it's like hyper super localized. So the idea is that like you're selling stuff to your neighbors and people in your community. Uh, so yeah, it's free to to use and download. I, I've bought some random stuff off there. So I would, yeah, totally plug them. And the last one I'd say is a tiny URL. It does what it says in the box. They've been around for <laughs> ages. I did used to use another one, a URL shortener. I think it was called Bitly, but then they yep. monetized it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to pay to make my URL shortener. So <laughs> tiny URL, shout out to you guys. Thanks for keeping it free. And yeah, basically you just... If you need to shorten a URL, you just throw it in there, tiny URL, bink, and it gives you a, you know, HTTP, Lari bar with five or six letters.com, and you just click, you can send that link, and people click it, and it takes them to the full URL. So, uh, yeah, there's a few little products that hopefully work nice. for me, and, and hopefully your audience can find some value there. I love it. I find it so awesome how there's, like, there's so much space for so many different, like, little products that serve a very specific purpose for a very specific audience. And you can just build a nice mm. solid business running these small tech products, which is amazing. So yeah, thanks for sharing those. I will definitely be checking out Carrot and the PDF filler sounds pretty great too. And tiny URL, I already knew. They're pretty cool. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for You're coming welcome. on the podcast. I appreciate it. Very welcome, Raph. Yeah, man, cool. it was good, good to catch up and chat. And hopefully the audience is, uh, you know, learn a thing or two about recruitment and the market and what's happening. But uh yeah, I think that this the market, the last thing I'll say is that, that honestly tech hasn't had its best year in the last 12 to 18 months, but from what we're seeing, so I predicted at the end of last year, I said Q1 is going to be a kind of wait and see month if we got through the end of the quarter and didn't see a bunch of Canadian layoffs. I think Bell and a couple of other large corporate enterprises have decided to make some layoffs, which is cool, but as long as we're not seeing a bunch of startups VC funded make layoffs, I think Q2 is probably going to be the unthawing. And then hopefully okay. Q3, Q4, we're going to start to see some good movement again in the market. We're starting to see some clients like pop up again and start to have people get back in touch with us. Say, hey, can you help? I'm like, okay. So we're starting to see things move. Anybody who's out there struggling to find work, just be patient. Happy to help you if you want to chat and have conversations about that as well. Awesome. That is very hopeful sounding and I love it. So great note to end it on. Thanks for coming on You're and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, man. Take care. All the best. All right. See ya. Gotcha. Folks, that was my interview with Adam Delgado of North Technology People. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned some interesting stuff about recruitment. And make sure to keep an eye out for whatever Adam is brewing on the side, this exciting new product. So thanks again for listening. You can go find If Am I Creative at goec.io. You can subscribe to the podcast at smalltechpodcast.com. Find us on YouTube, on Spotify everywhere that fine podcasts are found you can subscribe to our newsletter at smalltechpodcast.com which is where we will be sending you all kinds of neat tips and tricks about building small tech products so that's it for this week's episode we all want to do some good in the world so go out there and build something good folks i'll see you in the next one see ya